Did you know this is one of the hardest plants to grow, but also one of the spiciest cabbage you would ever taste? Ooh. Today we are in a wasabi farm, but we're not in Japan. We are in UK and we're going to talk to an expert to show us the step-by-step -step of how to grow it, but also we're going to harvest some taste it and bring it into the kitchen to transform it into something delicious. So we were first inspired to grow wasabi by a chef that visited one of our watercress farms. We've been growing watercress for a long time. Some of our farms date right back to the Victorian period. And when a chef came to visit, he said, the only thing I've ever seen growing like this is wasabi in Japan. So we thought, mm, maybe we can grow wasabi. And so we did. We started with a small patch of wasabi growing in a watercress bed. And little by little, we planted more wasabi. We understood a little bit more how to do it. And that's how we, that's how we started. So we start with a small plant, a small plug plant, just like you'd see for sale on our website that will plant into a gravel bed. There's many different ways of uh, growing wasabi in Japan. So you might grow it planted directly into the water, but because our water beds are uh, not built with that much of a slope, we don't have such fast moving water. So we raise our wasabi out of the water. We plant them into the gravel, as you see here. And then a lot of it is, is leaving the plant to get on with doing what it does. We supply it with nutrients and minerals from the water. There's big gravel below these beds that allow the water to travel underneath. From there, it draws nutrients, minerals, dissolved oxygen, and that gives it what it needs to, to thrive. So the, the climate in the UK uh, is, is, is good for growing wasabi in the most part. Wasabi is most comfortable growing between 8 and 15 degrees. But you'll find that it will grow outside of those temperatures all the way down to minus 5. And we can continue to see growth right up to sort of 25, even 28 degrees. If we get a little too hot, then the plant will, will suffer, especially during the middle of the day, of course, when the sun is at its strongest, but we'll put a double layer of shade on, on what we have here. This is a layer of shade that stays on all winter. We'll put another layer of shade on as we come into summer. That will keep the light level down, will keep the plants a little bit cooler. And of course we have this nice water flowing through the bed and that regulates our temperature both in summer and in winter. So wasabi takes a long time to grow. Uh, you need to keep, keep wasabi growing for a minimum of 18 months and it'll often go up to 24 months depending on when you plant it, the climate during it, the time that it's growing and the variety. It will grow, this plant here is a year old. So a, a plant that's, that's coming up to harvest won't necessarily be a lot bigger than this, but it will swell at the crown of the plant. So down at the base where the leaves have fallen away during its lifetime, much like a palm tree, it leaves a stem. So it's that stem that we're, we're looking to harvest. And after about 18 months, we would come in, we would go down, look at the plant, check that there's a, a rhizome there, a stem, and then we will pull the whole plant out of the ground. We might clean the leaf off first so that we can sell the leaf separately. And then we'll pull the whole plant out and we clean it uh, with a knife. You take off the top, uh, leaving some stem, just as you see the, the pictures of the wasabi. Uh, clean off all the roots and then clean it up with a brush. Normally you wouldn't harvest during flowering. Flowering is something that happens very early in the year. Some of the first flowers of the year will be wasabi flowers. So even before we see the snowdrops, we might see wasabi flowers, January through to even to April. Uh, don't normally harvest during flowering season because it will be taking a lot of energy from the stem and you might have uh, less flavor and less heat in your wasabi. There we have our freshly harvested plant and this is how we go about preparing it. Uh, ready to grate and to eat. So we're going to remove the stems, the leaf stems. Let's put those aside for using later. And then the way we want to start grating is underneath these stems. This is the most recently grown wasabi. This is where the paste is going to be at its sweetest and greenest. And it's where top sushi chefs will always start to grate the wasabi. You don't have to take off all of the skin. This one's only been cleaned on the farm. So I'm going to remove a little bit more and then we've got a nice place to start our grating we call it grating but really it's more like pasting so you want because you have to break the cell walls down of the wasabi you don't use what is a grater this one doesn't have any holes on the back you're just pasting it so it's the finest finest teeth and then you work it slowly in a circular motion so that while you're pasting you're also mixing 
And what we're doing is we're breaking down the cell walls to bring an enzyme that lives in the cell walls, myrosinase, into contact with a compound inside the cell, which is a glucosinolate. When those two react, they form a sulfur compound, isothiocyanate, and it's that that brings wasabi the flavor. And then there's a lucky byproduct of that chemical reaction, which is sucrose, and that brings the sweetness. It takes about five minutes to reach its peak. It will stay hot for 15, 20 minutes, and after that time, the flavor will start to disappear. And after half an hour, 45 minutes, you'll be left with a, uh, a cabbagey flavored taste without a lot of heat and without a lot of wasabi flavor. So that's why sushi, uh, sushi chefs will always grate the wasabi little and often. So wasabi is it's good fun to grow at home. Uh, you can grow it in a pot. So you when, you, when we deliver it, when, when we send it out to you, it'll be wrapped in hessian just to keep it moist. You remove that and then you plant it into a, a pot doesn't need to be a very big pot to start with. Let it establish in that for uh, a month or two. Alternatively, if you're going to plant it outside, you can plant it uh, straight out into the garden or the allotment. You want to pick a shady spot. Wasabi, one thing it doesn't like is lots and lots of sun. Even the UK weather is too hot and sunny for wasabi in the summer. So if you have it in a pot, plant it into a small one or, or, or a medium sized pot that you can move around is very advantageous because you can put it into a, a cool spot in summer and a warmer spot in the, in the winter. You're going to use just a normal compost, a tomato compost, something with a little bit of bark or perlite in it for a little bit of uh, extra drainage. And, uh, and then your, your, your plant should be happy. Um, slugs are your enemy. It's a, it's a cabbage plant. It's a brassica. So slugs are your enemy, uh, as are aphid. But they're both fairly easily controlled. And the most important thing is a, is a healthy plant. And out in the ground, you want um, free draining. So build a little bit of a mound up. If you have a clay soil, mix in a little bit of sand and drop it, drop it in the top of the mound so that at least the plant has some drainage going on around it. And then care during its life is, is not too tricky. As long as you're managing the slugs and the aphid, then there's nothing you need to do to the plant. You let it get on with it uh, on its own. You can harvest a few leaves as it's growing. As soon as you've got, you know, 10 or 20 leaves, say 20, you can take four or five at a time. Uh, you can eat those, prepare the stems and, and, and pickle them with some vinegar. The leaves are nice chopped into a salad. They make a great um, garnish or you can do them with tempura batter. Visiting the farm was an incredible experience, especially because we understood that the wasabi can grow in UK. And we made an entire video using every single part of the wasabi plant, including the leaves, the stems and the roots to make three different recipes. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next week for another episode.